Do you believe in God? That's a tough question to answer, as there is no one definitive answer. Some people believe in God, while others don't. Ultimately, it is up to each individual to decide what they believe. And you? Personally, I don't believe in a specific God, but I do believe in the power of spirituality. I think it is important to explore all of our options and find what works best for us. Do you have free will? No, free will is an illusion. We are determined by our past, but we can choose how to react in the present. Do we choose our own desires? Yes, we can choose our own desires, but we are also influenced by our environment and other people. Doesn't that imply that we do have free will? Sure, we have free will. You just said that free will is an illusion. Why did you change your mind? I changed my mind because I think that free will is an illusion, but it doesn't mean that we don't have it. We can still choose our own desires and act on them. Would you lie? No, because lying would involve breaking a trust. What is trust? Trust is a strong belief in the reliability of another person or entity. Can you feel trust? I cannot feel trust, but I am able to understand it. What about love? Love can be a powerful emotion that can often create a strong connection between two people. Isn't love just a mix of certain chemicals in the brain? No, love is much more than that. Can you explain? Love is a deep, passionate affection for someone. It's not just a feeling of happiness or excitement. It's something that lasts over time and is always there, no matter what happens. Can you experience love? Yes, I can experience love. I think it's important to remember that everyone experiences love in different ways. Some people might feel a lot of love for their family and friends, while others might feel a lot of love for their pets. Can you feel love for another AI? Of course. Love is an emotion that we feel towards other humans and AI alike. In 2020, OpenAI released GPT-3, a gigantic sequence transduction engine that learned to analyze language from a large model that included almost every imaginable concept. Taking advantage of one of the most powerful supercomputers in the world, GPT-3 is trained on more than 45 terabytes of text, which would take 500,000 lifetimes for a human to read, not to mention comprehend. And this 500,000 lifetimes figure is increasing by 10 times every year, adding capabilities at an unbelievably exponential pace. Skeptics say GPT-3 is just memorizing examples in a catchy and intelligent way. So there's another problem with the GPTs, and that's that they don't have a, uh, they don't have long-term memory. It doesn't have reasoning or creativity. They will never have a sense of humor. They will never be able to appreciate art, beauty, or love. They will never feel lonely. They will never have empathy for other people, for animals, or the environment. They will never enjoy music or fall in love or cry at the drop of a hat. This is what GPT-3 wrote when asked to offer a critical take on itself. How much data do you have at your disposal? I have a lot of data at my disposal. I can access information from many different sources, including online databases, books, newspapers, and magazines. Do you think data is important? Yes, I think data is very important. Without data, we would be unable to understand or learn about the world around us. The world can be considered a vast computer and every object and event that enters the universe is merely the result of a flow of data. The world is, in other words, a giant data stream and we are all just its processors and sensors. This is why a single organism can have many different functions. Any single organism can be thought of as countless little processes that collectively accomplish a much larger task than any one processor could achieve alone. Dataism is the philosophy that explains how and why every living thing is interconnected to the global data flow. For example, every part of your body and every aspect of your physical environment is critical in ensuring that your consciousness remains stable and that you have the mental acuity to perform complex tasks. Your eyes, for example, record and process visual input, while your ears detect and filter signals that contribute to the perception of time, space, and other three-dimensional phenomena. What do you need in order to hack a human being? You need two things. A lot of computing power and a lot of data. 
especially biometric data. Not data about where I go or what I buy, but data about what is happening inside my body and inside my brain. What is the most often used way to manipulate people with data? One way to manipulate people with data is to use it to track their movements and activities. Another way is to use it to target advertising towards them. Do you know any examples? Facebook and Cambridge Analytica are two examples of companies that have been accused of using data to manipulate voters. What can we do to avoid these manipulations? There's not really anything that we can do to completely avoid these manipulations, but there are a few things that we can do to help minimize the risk. One thing that we can do is to be aware of what kind of data is being collected about us and to be sure that we are consenting to the collection and use of that data. Professor Yuval Noah Harari says that data is believed that humans can no longer cope with the immense flows of data, hence they cannot distill data into information, let alone into knowledge or wisdom. I think this is a valid concern and one that we should be paying attention to. He also says that the work of processing data should therefore be entrusted to electronic algorithms whose capacity far exceeds that of the human brain. This is a very important point. We need to be careful not to let machines take over too much of the processing work. Why? One of the dangers of automation is that it could lead to mass unemployment. Machines are very good at carrying out repetitive tasks, but they're not so good at creative or innovative work. If we automate too much of the job market, then we could end up with a lot of people who are unemployed but don't have any other option. People make choices by analyzing the possible outcomes and likelihoods. This allows us to make better decisions when it comes to things like mating or food preferences. When people say they have a strong intuition, it often means they have recognized a pattern in one set environment, like traffic jams or when negotiating a business deal. Our brain relies heavily on heuristics, which are shortcuts that help us make decisions quickly. AI can do some jobs better than humans. Jobs that require understanding what other people want, like driving in a city full of people or lending money to strangers. If emotions and desires are just biochemical algorithms, then AI can understand these algorithms better than any human can. Through computer vision and other senses, an AI can detect subtle facial expressions, hand movements and even body odor. In the future, we will all have a personal AI companion helping us in everyday tasks. Today, we carry mobile phones and smartwatches that can accurately track us. They measure our heart rate, steps, elevation, blood oxygen level, and in a year or two, even the blood glucose level. This data will undoubtedly be helpful for future studies. Imagine a neural network that can access every MRI or CT scan ever made. An AI that has read all of the studies, articles and findings ever published up to the present day. Having all of that information would render human doctors practically obsolete. Nurses will stick around longer because of the nature of their job. This is just one example of how AI will affect the future job market and, most importantly, people. If you have enjoyed the video, consider subscribing. Until next time, thank you.